Hello, and welcome to today's presentation on getting organized for midterms brought to you by the Academic Success Webinar Series at Georgetown University. I'm Betsy Malarsik. I'm a learning skills specialist with the ARC. Today, we're going to be talking about how to balance the never ending readings and coursework for your classes along with the sudden influx of papers, exams, and projects. If you have a question at any time, please feel free to add it to the chat. So at Georgetown University, the term midterm is a misnomer. A lot of professors label the first big test that you take in February as a midterm, and then you have another one in March that's also a midterm, another one in April that's also a midterm. So they aren't really falling in the middle of the semester. Instead, once they begin, about a third of the way through the semester, they keep going until final exam time. Knowing that this influx of assignments is an even bigger reason to try to take control of your study habits sooner rather than later. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So trying to put all of your energy into the first big assignment means that you won't have the energy to do the assignment after that or the assignment after that. Many college students are susceptible to the burnout cycle. What happens is you stay up late to finish a major assignment, cramming, so to speak. Because you stay up late to finish that assignment, then you become too tired to keep up with schoolwork. So you stay up all night finishing a paper that's due the next day at 8 a.m. So the next day you respond by taking a nap, being too tired to do anything productive. Because of that, you then fall behind on all of your major assignments, which means that then that next paper you can't start working on until the night before because you're so tired from the last paper. Once you get caught up in this cycle, it's hard to fall out of it. So trying to avoid getting caught up in it in the first place is an important goal. With that in mind, trying to avoid cramming in order to avoid burning out can really help you maintain the stamina and the energy to complete all of the assignments that you need to throughout the semester. This is easier said than done, especially if you are deadline motivated, but that's what a lot of what we're talking about today is going to be aiming towards. How can we try to create balance so that you're working on assignments over a longer period of time rather than dropping everything to study for a test or write a paper. The first step in figuring out this ideal work schedule is to assess your major deadlines. I'm gonna be using the term major deadlines or major assignments quite a bit in this presentation. And what I mean by that are your tests, your papers, your projects, anything that requires extra effort and isn't part of your routine, something that breaks up that routine. So the first step is to look at your major deadlines for the next month. Start by looking over all of your syllabi. Go through your syllabi and Canvas pages, taking note of any upcoming test, paper, and project deadlines. Note any assignments that will require extra time to complete. Once you've looked at all of these deadlines, write them down in one place. By writing your deadlines down in one place, you're seeing how your coursework compares to one another's course load. So seeing deadlines next to one another gives you a sense of which weeks will be busiest. You, at a minimum, should look at your deadlines for the next month. Make sure, though, that you look at the week after spring break. Sometimes we approach February as a, a race until we get a week off, but 
some professors have major assignments due right after spring break. Looking at what's due after spring break will help you not be blindsided if you have travel plans. That way you can plan on incorporating that into your workload before spring break. Now looking through spring break, I'd say is a minimum of how far ahead you should be looking. Some folks might benefit more from looking at the whole semester and adding those deadlines to your major assignment list, especially if you have a class where the deadlines are more heavily weighted assignments. So here's just an example of looking at this week. If I have a group project due today, the 15th, a problem set due Thursday, the 16th, and a test on Thursday, the 16th, those are three deadlines for major assignments that are falling very close to one another. And just by looking at each assignment in isolation, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But when you compare all of the assignment deadlines for different courses, all of a sudden I realize that this is a difficult week. So in order to feel successful about completing all of these assignments in time, I would have needed to have started working on all of them a week beforehand. It's difficult to cram when you have multiple assignments to potentially cram for. After you have looked at your major deadlines, the next step is to assess your reoccurring assignments. Do this by thinking back on the past week, the past month, and asking yourself, do you have any reoccurring deadlines? This is something like regular weekly reflections, problem sets, labs, maybe blog posts or discussion posts. Recurring deadlines are often assignments that you might need to take more work from, but they're that you may need to dedicate more time to than a typical reading. But you have several. So it's a paper every week, it's a lab every week, a problem set every week. They take more work, but they also happen frequently. So if you've had them in the past, you will probably have them again. So plan on having them again. Don't plan a paper schedule around a world without your labs or without your problem sets. Know that you're going to have those assignments again and plan on taking time to work on them as you have been working on them for the first, the, excuse me, for the last several weeks. Also ask yourself, when did you focus on homework? So what days do you typically work on readings and worksheets for class? Consider why you work on homework during those times and if you will continue to use them for homework. I know for me, I'm gonna go through some sample schedules. I tend to be very deadline motivated, which means that if I have a reading do the next day, I'm probably reading it the night before because I'm motivated by that deadline. If that's the case, then there's a good chance I'm going to continue operating that way throughout the coming semester. So it makes sense to plan that I will be working on those assignments during those times as well. First, you are with those first two questions assessing what times aren't appropriate for working on major assignments that are due in a few weeks. With that in mind, you can then ask yourself what blocks seem open for you to work on your major assignments. You're looking at your schedule for the week and considering not only the times that are free that are available for you to work, but the times when you have the energy to focus on assignments that aren't immediately due. Often something like a Wednesday night after a day of many classes might be open because you're extremely tired and you're too tired to do homework then. If you're too tired to do homework then, then it's unlikely that you will have the energy to work on a paper due in three weeks. So considering your energy levels in scheduling these blocks is important. 
we're going to take a look at my sample calendar and how I assessed what blocks would be good for me to choose to work on long-term major assignments. This first calendar here is just my course schedule. So throughout all of these, my courses will appear in dark green. So I have five classes here, some Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the others Tuesday, Thursday. After that, I'm adding in light purple the homework blocks that seem to regularly represent when I'm doing schoolwork. What you can notice from this is that I tend to work the evenings before my 9 a.m. classes because I have homework due in the 9 a.m. classes, and I tend to not work the evenings when I don't have class immediately the next morning. That's when I'm tired and I find it difficult to focus. So in a big way, this is a very deadline motivated schedule. You also have to consider other commitments. What I've added here in gold are reoccurring club meetings and also just social obligations. There may be evenings on Friday and Saturday nights that I am motivated to work on assignments, but I know that I frequently am doing social things during those times, so I don't want to plan on that as my time for working on recurring assignments. If you plan to work regularly on your midterm work, at a time block when there's something more pressing regularly or something that you're more likely to say yes to, then you're almost setting yourself up to fail because you're choosing to work during a time when you're more likely to cancel. I know I'll cancel work in order to go spend time with friends on Friday or Saturday night, so I'm going to proactively not schedule work for those times. That leads me to identifying two times a week when I am committing to regularly working on major assignments. The biggest one for me is Saturdays from 12 to 4. I'm doing this on a Saturday because I don't have anything due the next day, which means I'm not going to be deadline motivated. I'm not going to cancel my plans to work on my paper or my study for my test because I have something due the next day, because typically I won't have anything due the next day. And then I've put it from 12 to 4 because typically I'm not doing anything in particular then, and I'm still allowing myself time to sleep in the morning. My other block that I've added is on Wednesday evening. I've put it for a few hours, 8 to 10 p.m. on Wednesday evening for a few reasons. One is that, again, I don't have any homework immediately due the next morning. If I'm really last minute working on something for my Thursday classes, I can do that during that homework block on Thursday morning. And then I've also put it later in the day because I know I tend to be tired on Wednesdays, so I'm giving myself time to rest. I know that I've tried to push into completing assignments right after I complete my sociology class, my last class for the day, but I'm so tired that I need a break. So instead of fighting it, I'm trying to give myself a break. And yes, I will have to push myself to get motivated to work on things Wednesday evening, but it will be more possible than if I tried to do it earlier. So there's no right or wrong for when to schedule these blocks. It's really based around assessing when you are most likely to be able to make yourself work on these assignments. So again, I went over some of these things, but just to clarify what you should be looking for when you're choosing your major assignment work blocks. Choose times when your energy is high and you can focus. Saying that you're choosing times when your energy is high might be a little aspirational, but times when your energy isn't low. 
when you aren't going to say no to work because you need a nap. And most importantly, times that you can focus. Choose times that you can commit to every week. Again, avoid planning on working on these assignments during a time when you know that you have other things going on regularly. Also avoid work blocks when other assignments might take over. And related to that, try working on major assignments at the beginning of a study block rather than at the end of one. Typically, students might sit down and work on a homework assignment due the next day first and say afterwards they're going to work on a paper, but then they never get to the paper because they're so tired after doing the homework assignment. If you give yourself a small goal of working towards the major assignment first, then you're not going to abandon the second homework assignment because it's due sooner. So that's a better way to get everything you want to have done complete within that block that's more realistic based on wavering energy levels. We're going to move on to creating your study schedule for a specific assignment. I would recommend starting your assignment earlier so that you can do less in one sitting. Often we have a major assignment coming up, so we block out eight hours on one Saturday to say, this is what I'm doing this assignment. And sometimes that may work for you. But if instead you can spread those eight hours across eight days, then they can be very small little nuggets of time. So here, for example, I have a sample study session for a test where I have a homework block that I would usually do from 12 to one, and I usually eat breakfast from 10 to 11. So how can I add studying for an hour before homework so that I am, again, completing that studying, not putting it off after I've done the homework, but just doing smaller little pieces. So I'm more likely to sit down and study for just this hour at a time instead of doing one two-hour block of studying. In planning for your next test, Planning several shorter study blocks over a longer period of time is also preferable to those big blocks because it allows you more time to practice recall. When you're studying for a test, you're not only teaching yourself the information, but you're also testing your ability to recall that information. That's why professors are so against cramming because you're storing the information in your head temporarily because you are regurgitating it the next day, but then the day after that, you're not testing yourself again on how well you can remember that information. If you start studying earlier, it gives you more time to test how well you can forge those neural connections to information in your brain, which will ultimately help you prepare better for the test. If you want some more tips on specifically how to study well, take a look at some of our previous webinars where we talk about the five-day study cycle. Related to that, we do recommend planning study blocks across at least five different days. Five to seven is usually pretty healthy. And if you have a day when you know you cannot study because you have classes all day, or you're out of town, then add an extra day to your study plan. If you know you won't study, plan on not studying. Here we have, based on my previous schedule, a sample study plan. So as I mentioned before, all of the dark green is my course schedule. All of the light purple is my homework and all of the gold are my social obligations. On Friday the 24th, in red, I have a test for calculus 2 at 3 p.m. So 
working towards that Friday, I've included all of these melon colored blocks as study blocks. And I'll talk through how I made these decisions. I want to start with a really small study block where I'm just looking over my plan for studying. And I'll talk more about that later. So I have just an hour on Sunday morning just devoted to planning out what I'm going to study when. Then I have, before my big Sunday homework block, another little study session. Again, I'm trying to study for less time, but before I do all of my homework, so I make sure I commit to it. I've then planned the rest of my study blocks. Again, before my homework sessions and avoiding any homework uh, deadline conflicts. So even though I'm studying alongside some of my homework blocks on Tuesday and Thursday morning, I've made sure to study first. And then I don't have a study block longer than three hours as my longest, but most of these are two. And I'm starting with smaller study blocks and letting them get bigger because I know that the further away from the test I am, the less motivated I am going to be to study. So I'm planning on studying for less time so that I'm more likely to commit to it. When you are making your study study blocks, also be sure to create specific study goals. You can break your study plan into specific tasks, and this will make it easier to schedule exam prep over a longer period of time. So I'm looking at my small hour-long blocks that I mentioned earlier in the presentation, and instead of planning on studying for one block and studying for the next, I've made it more specific. So the first block, I'm going to read over chapter one notes. The next block, I'm going to make flashcards for vocab. If you have a sense of what it is specifically you need to do, it will be easier to plan. This is also the case for scheduling a paper writing process. One of the most important things you can do for planning out your paper process is breaking the overall process into steps. Instead of writing your entire paper in one sitting, consider scheduling the different steps of your writing process on different days. So how can you work on brainstorming and outlining one day and work on drafting another day and maybe even revision a third day? For paper writing, work ahead of time. Choose the study blocks when you have the best mental energy, even if it feels like you have plenty of time to wait until later to get started. If you have a large block on a Saturday, it's going to be easier to focus on the essay that day than it will be midweek. And then starting small is a really helpful tip for both tests and papers. Fight procrastination by scheduling your brainstorming session well before you need to start working on your draft, and that'll make it a lot easier to get started. Here we have a paper writing plan. So for this, we have a Problem of God essay due on a Wednesday at 9 a.m. So I'm beginning working on this paper a full week beforehand with my paper planning session in which I'm brainstorming and outlining. Again, the melon colored blocks are when I'm working on the paper. And as you notice, I have this initial block on Wednesday evening, and then I'm not coming back to it on Thursday or Friday. That's because I don't have good mental energy on a Thursday and Friday, and I don't really have a good block of time. But by starting my outlining and brainstorming on Wednesday, that means that Saturday, when I do have the energy, I can begin outlining and drafting. So I'm using Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning to write the bulk of my paper. And I'm ready to do that because I did the brainstorming earlier in the week. 
This leaves me time on Monday afternoon for revision. And then I still know myself and I still know that I'm going to be working on this at the last minute. So I'm planning on continuing to work on it at the last minute. So the evening before I've scheduled a paper revision block. I've mentioned a few times now how important it is to schedule a first study session that is easy and approachable. Starting can be the hardest part of working ahead of time, so ease into your assignment by scheduling a short, low-stakes assignment block a week before your deadline. What should you plan on doing during this planning session? Start by looking over your assignment prompt, your paper topic, or your test guidelines. Then write out a list of steps that you need to accomplish. Estimate how long each task will take you and schedule your blocks out across the coming week. If that's all you do in your first study session or your first paper writing session, you'll be in good shape because the first step to, to working on an assignment is to figure out your plan for working on that assignment. Always end your planning session by scheduling your next planning session. Even if you haven't gotten done the work that you wanted to do, if you know the next time that you're going to be planning, then you will be in a continuous cycle of working towards these assignment deadlines. So as long as you have a time to plan, then you haven't forgotten about these deadlines. We'll have time in a moment for questions, but wanted to let you know about our next webinar, which will be Tuesday, March 21st at 4 p.m., the same link. It will be on productive procrastination. So using those times when your attention's wandering as a way to get back into your assignment. If you have any questions, please add them to the chat. Otherwise, thank you so much for your attention today and best of luck with midterms.